somebody let me know if we're appearing live. Oh, somebody's watching on Twitter. I don't know who joined. Welcome. I am. Um, let's see. I think I think something's happening. Up, oh, it says we're live. But I know there is a delay. So I welcome everyone to the Social Media Dames Unconference. This will be the ninth unconference, and it's the inaugural mini virtual unconference. One reason why I'm doing a mini unconference is because um, I don't think that the format will work the same way on digital platforms as it does in person. In person, there's a lot more interaction. I better click back over to Zoom. Oh, look, three people are waiting to get in. Admit. Oh, there's Rebecca. Three participants. Hey. Hi. Welcome, everyone. I noticed that Jennifer's here, and I just want to take a, a sip of my delicious coffee from her lovely mug. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Ooh, the coffee's nasty, but I still love the mug. Um, I am switching back and forth. We are live on Facebook. So please refrain from making any rude sounds or cursing, I guess. Um, I want to make sure that we're, we're recording too on the Zoom. Um, just to let you know, we are also, yeah, we're not recording yet. Now we are. So we are live on Facebook on the Social Media Dames page. We are connected through Zoom. Um, we are recording this for posterity to share on other digital platforms. And I'm just so glad that we can share this time together. But I will mention probably a few more times today in the next couple of hours that this is definitely not a slick production. These are all a little bit experimental. Um, I was very sad on March 12th when the governor put the kibosh on the Social Media Dames Unconference um, that was to be held on Friday, March the 13th um, at five o'clock while I was picking up the um, food from Beef and Board's Dinner Theater, the governor put the kibosh on everything. And uh, so the lovely platter from Beef and Boards was no consolation whatsoever. I did a few things like tried some Wisdom Wednesdays where I invited some, uh, some women to participate. Um, not, it didn't have the same, I, I think I tried too many different platforms at once because I was doing like Twitter and I was simulcasting live uh, through uh, um, restream.io, um, which allows you to simulcast to 30 different channels and this is for free. Now I will say, oh, Kitsy's here. Kitsy's one of our, uh, our speed storytellers. Welcome, Kitsy. I have, um, just to let you know, you have the capacity to change your name if you would like to. And so I think you can even add maybe a couple of words after your name, like maybe your name and Twitter handle, if you um, know how to change your name around on the Zoom platform. Uh, that is uh, something that I can allow to do. Um, let me... I have, oh, I'm glad you're here, Kitsy, because um, I didn't, if you sent your uh, short bio to KJ, um, if you could post it in the chat here, that'd be great. Um, just so- Yeah, I wasn't have... made aware of that. What exactly do you need? Oh. Or I missed it. Yeah, could there's well. no, there is absolutely no big deal. I just want the uh, women in the room to be able to connect with you afterward. So if you want to copy your LinkedIn 
bio or your Twitter bio or anything on Facebook, and then just a way for them to connect with you. Um, that'd Perfect. be great. Um, I am going to be feeding um, KJ, the uh, kitty correspondent from Pet Pals TV, will be joining us soon. She's running this, uh, the speed storytelling uh, section that will begin promptly at 1030. Um, I, have, as I mentioned, I'm opening this room up now for a little bit of open networking. Um, Denise, is there anything you want to share with the women while we're here right now before we get uh, the speed storytelling going and then the mini unconference? Sure. Thanks, Amy. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Denise Prawl, and I'm the owner of Whiteboard Learning, and Whiteboard Learning is a training company. I am a referral marketing strategist, so I work with business owners to fill their pipeline full of referrals that are ready to buy from them. So I do that with uh, classes. I've got a private Facebook group where I do free training uh, live every single week, and I'm super excited to be here. This is my first one, Amy. So thank you. Well, that's wonderful. And that, that gives me a good segue. The Social Media Dames Unconferences started back in really in 2012 when um, Aaron Albert and I were on Twitter complaining that some of the social media conferences that were going on had 85% um, white guys, one specifically. <laughs> we were like, you know, social media is new why aren't more women um, in this space? And so we decided to do something about it rather than just complaining. And in 2013, we put on the inaugural Social Media Dames Unconference. Um, and since then, uh, we had a total of eight in-person events throughout the state of Indiana, mostly central Indiana, but we did get up to Fort Wayne for one of them. Um, and as far south, I think Mooresville maybe was one. Is that South? Oh, don't test my Indiana knowledge right now. It's way too early. Maybe I need another sip from my delicious. Ruby it's water. totally South. <laughs> mm. Okay, good. I'm so glad <laughs> because really um, sometimes I get those, uh, those like Vils um, confused. Oh, here comes Carrie. Hold on just a second. It is... It is challenging to do all of these tasks <laughs> and click and read and keep an eye on Facebook. So I do appreciate your patience. Hey, Carrie or KJ. Hey, you know what, KJ? My initials are AJ. So maybe I'm just going to always call you KJ. Is that okay? Oh, you're me. let me take you off. Uh, I'm trying to unmute you. You must be muted on your, oh, there we go. How's that? That's better. All right. I'm actually trying to fix my name so it says KJ. That's pretty much, unless you're, you know, someone who in my family who's scolding me for something, you don't call me Carrie anymore. It's, it's just KJ. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to scold anyone, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sweet. Um, so, I wanted to, I was talking about how this is um, an unconference where there is no, there never will be like a keynote speaker and breakout sessions. Um, when we were able to do it in person, it was when all women in one room sharing wisdom, we had the 18 storytellers each sharing five minutes worth of just amazing wisdom, but also connecting with one another. So there's really a, an amazing um, organic network here that has arisen uh, from the unconference movement, as I call it. Um, this is a very, <laughs> this will be challenging. There are a couple people. Oh, Denise just put her information in the chat. Thank you for that. Um, Kitsy is going to put her information in. If you scroll back up the chat, um, KJ, this just, I'm just giving her some information. You'll see that I put um, Justice is on top of the, and then 
Shelly is next. I'll, now, figure, I'll figure it out. I don't have, so, <laughs> since I logged in late, the, all, the I only see the things in the chat since I've been here. So everything you put uh, in the chat, I can't see. <laughs> okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Here we go. Okay. I'm gonna copy everything. Perfect. And then, and then you can copy it over. This will just help you. Oh, I hear, you know what? I hear a, a blink from the LinkedIn. Oh, let's see. It's all good. Yeah. This is this is part of uh, everyday life now. We get into the Zoom and we figure it out as we go along, right? Right. <laughs> We're not even officially started yet. This is all just- uh, Ooh, uh, the pre-show. Yes, the pre-show before the, the speed storytelling opener. Let's see, I hear a blink. I'm just, oh, it's Marianne. And Marianne, I have to tell you, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name, but uh, she is from um, Nairobi, Kenya. Wow. And she's going to be one of the speed storytellers. Fantastic. I'm just asking her to join us. Let me see if I can get her the link real fast for the, and while I get this arranged with um, Marianne, um, can you tell me a little bit about um, KJ, about the Kitty Correspondent and Pet Pals TV? And I'd love to. I didn't know that you were nationally syndicated. That's amazing. And I'm gonna pop over to LinkedIn and, and connect with Marianne. Yeah, I'm always happy to talk about cats. So at some point you may have to cut me off and remind me that's not what we're here for today. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, dogs rule. Just let me throw that in. Well, you know, at Pet Pals TV, we love all pets. It's just my job to uh, go searching for the positive, uplifting stories about having cats in your life because I happen to have six of them. Uh, as you mentioned, Pet Pals <laughs> TV is nationally syndicated. Uh, we're out in 20 eight markets across the country. Uh, we reach 6 million households every year. I'm sorry, every week, every year, every week, we're reach, reaching 6 million households. So um, it's pretty amazing when you're talking about, you know, social media dames and uh, women of influence. Patty Spittler is certainly one of them. She has uh, led the charge here in Indianapolis, is a part of the Broadcasters uh, Hall of Fame and uh, is my mentor. And it's an honor to be a part of a show that she has built over the last 10 years, an independent programming show about her passion, which is pets. Uh, so each week uh, here in, in Indianapolis, if you are with us, we are on uh, Wish TV and also WHMB Channel 40. If you happen to be uh, with one of the subscribers that doesn't have Wish anymore, we simulcast. Uh, and it's 1030 on on Catterdays, as I call it. <laughs> uh, and then if you happen to be watching uh, from the, uh, somewhere else outside of Indianapolis, if you go to petpalstv.com, you can see our national listings and all of the places that we are. And then every show gets put on demand two weeks after it's aired. So, oh, hi, hi, Marianne. Um, <laughs> I just want to introduce you real fast to Marianne, and I wish I could pronounce her last name, but I've never even heard her pronounce her last name yet. She Good is credit. coming, she's coming to us from Nairobi, Kenya. Do you believe that? This is what I love about technology so much. There's zero chance that we ever would have connected prior to this kind of technology. Um, she will be one of our speed storytellers. I'm going to encourage her to put her information in the chat so that you can reach out. I encourage all of you, if you're on LinkedIn, to especially add that link because that will be very important. LinkedIn, and of course, I, I'm, I'm on Facebook mostly only because it's, you know, if you're doing social media, you have to understand these platforms and participate. It may not be my favorite, but it is the 800 pound gorilla. And it's actually where um, the Social Media Dames Unconference movement started. So um, we'll always have uh, 
a little bit of a presence on Facebook. Um, look, here's Mindy. I'm admitting Mindy now, keeping my eye on that. Yay. Um, let's, I, it, it, I didn't mean to interrupt KJ. I know that that is your, um, the Pep House TV is just one of your many, many enterprises. And um, can you tell me about the, the nerdy uh, podcast? Yes, yes. I, I learned something new yesterday uh, on Marie TV. If you don't watch Marie TV, she's a, she's a wonderful, inspirational woman. Uh, and she coined the phrase multi-passionate entrepreneur. And I was like, yeah, that's what I am. <laughs> I love it. Uh, because when asked, you know, if I had to choose between cats or my kind of nerdy life, I, I couldn't. I'm, I'm equally passionate about what I do with Pet Pals TV as I am with the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast. Uh, we are on Facebook as a network, the Kind of Nerdy Network, and you're welcome to join us. Uh, we are uh, a, a community that encourages everyone, women and men, uh, to be proud of their fandom and whatever it is that you are passionate about, whether it's uh, a, a movie series, a, a TV show, a book series, cats. Like if, if you're passionate about it and you can talk on and on about it, chances are there's someone in our group that is as passionate as you are about it. So we connect nerds to each other. Amy, I bet if you posted in the kind of nerdy network about how nerdy you are about infrastructure and all the digital things I don't understand, oh, that you would I'm... find other people that want to nerd out about it with you. <laughs> I doubt you'll find them and it'll probably just be a bunch of like coders. Yeah. Um, I am I am fascinated with internet infrastructure. It's what's allowing us to be able to connect like this um, for the first time in recorded history of our species. But um, don't get me started on that. I need to pay attention. You pay attention. Um, yes. So just uh, oh, go ahead. No, oh, no, no. I was just going to, you tell me to fill and I'll fill. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Uh, and, and you tell me to be quiet. I'll do that too. I'm very well behaved, Amy. Uh, so That's not what I've heard. I've oh heard my. otherwise, but that's all right. <laughs> well, there are some women here who can, uh, can tell you some stories, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have time for that today. <laughs> Um, so our podcast is weekly, Kind of Nerdy Girls. You can find it on Apple, on Spotify, uh, on YouTube, you know, all the podcast places. Uh, and uh, actually, I, I'm just getting ready to upload our, our new episode. We'll, we'll drop later today. And it's all about the Heartland Film Festival. Oh, and cool. A, a movie called Stunt Women, which is an action documentary documentary about the stunt women behind all of these amazing movies we've been watching from the Marvel movies to Resident Evil and Fast and the Furious. She actually got to be on set and, and cover some of this amazing, uh, amazing behind the scenes stuff that women have been doing for years and years and years. And we haven't really um, kind of it really explored what an amazing career that is and what kind of athletes these women truly are. So the Heartland Film Festival uh, actually starts, uh, it started yesterday and there's a screening of stunt women at Tibbs next Friday night, which we're gonna, we're gonna be at. Uh, so later today, if you wanna know more behind the scenes stuff about stunt women, that'll be part of our, our show, The Kind of Nerdy Girls. And um, are there going to be a lot of movies, um, Heartland movies at Tibbs this year, mm -hmm. or is it the only place, or mm -hmm. do you know any about any other, um, any other locations? Are they, they're doing I, some virtual, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, you can be a part of it virtually. There's over 70 films, and I think um, close to 60 of them are going to be available in their virtual space um, at heartlandfilmfestival.org. And, uh, and then Tibbs is one of their uh, main locations that they're gonna be doing different showings. And then also uh, Connor Prairie, uh, they're gonna be doing some uh, pop-up drive-in movie nights at Connor Prairie. So they, there's a way to be involved no matter where you're at in your comfort level this year. Uh, and a, a lot of really amazing women in film. Uh, the Heartland Film Festival, long before the, the movement to make sure that film festivals 
had the inclusion of 50-50 men and women, uh, the Heartland Film Festival was already doing that. So it's a, it's a great place to see some amazing uh, women in film. Well, I have covered um, the Heartland Film Festival. I have a bunch of media pass um, lanyards and it's the one thing that my daughter was always like, wow, my mom does that. You know, when you're a teenage girl, you don't really care about anything that your, your mom does. But that was always very <laughs> impressive to her because it is a very cool thing that happens in central Indiana. Um, I love all the folks there. Um, we're going to be going to the speed storytelling here at 1030. Woo! And, um, so, and I'm, I've really been watching the clock, which is amazing for me because um, time really is like a man-made construct. I'm, con I'm convinced of it. It doesn't really make sense when you think about it. So I don't like to be held to uh, constraints like time, although I know it's very important for other people and it does help us uh, coordinate things. But yeah, I'm not seeing um, Alex. Alex was going to be the first on the um, speed storytelling list. I'm going to hop over to Facebook and see if I can send her a message. In yeah, the she, she may be popping in here right at, at, at 1030. Um, I know that she was sort of squeezing us into a, a fully packed schedule, but I, 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 I'm so glad she's going to be here because she's just, a, she's a ball of energy and a, a absolutely fantastic woman to uh, connect with. Um, I need to, Amy, find the list of the order that you wanted yes. our, our speedsters to go in because I do not have that pulled up. So I will I need, do that. I need you to fill while I do some things. <laughs> okay. So I, it, while, uh, while you're doing some things, I'm going to go to our Facebook page and pull, let's see more. You know, and Facebook, I have to tell you, they um, implemented, let's see, they implemented this new, um, they do this all the time just to irritate people. They change up the back end of, of, the, um, of the application so that um, nothing is where it should be. Whenever you go look for it, they've moved it. Here, here, this is what I want. I'm gonna copy this link. And then, um, I don't know um, if the speed storytellers have seen the, well, I shouldn't post it there. That's where it is. I don't know if all the speed storytellers have seen the, um, the agenda. If you click on that, it will give you um, it will give you the list of the day and how we hope to uh, proceed. I will also just copy and paste the whole thing into the chat, and then um, and then we'll all know what's going on. All I right. have encouraged everyone to come for the whole time, but I know that there are several um, really busy women out there who can't hang out here for two hours. Well, and, so. and because this is live on Facebook, I did have a few questions that people ask me, like, if I can't make it while it's live, can I watch it later? It will all be available still on demand, right, Amy? Absolutely. Okay. And um, it will still be on the Facebook page for sure. And I will see if I can upload. Uh, well, the Zoom platform does save an MP4, which means I'll be able to upload it to YouTube as well, which will be better quality. The replays yes. on Facebook, they don't give you like HD. Um, so it's not the quality isn't as good if you want to reuse the content, the storytellers especially. And before we do start the speed storytelling, I encourage all of you to go into, um, instead of the gallery view, go to the speaker view, um, because that's what will be 
uh, broadcast live on Facebook. I guess it really doesn't matter how you view it, but I will be on speaker view. And let me see. Um, let me see how that changes because I, I have to let you know that there is a lag on the live on Facebook. So if anybody is in there right now, yeah. Yeah, we're switching back and forth. So that's good. Let me close out of that. Look, we're happening now on Facebook. All right, we're getting close, five minutes and we'll be starting the speed storytelling. Um, I will, first of all, um, we'll go with Alex Perry and then Mary Ann from, Ni um, from Nairobi, Kenya, do you believe that? Um, Shelly Harper, Sandra Connor, uh, Kitsy Duncan and Mindy Winkler and then Justice Kelly. And I see that some of our speed storytellers are already on. Um, that's great. If you don't see your information, um, if you could copy and paste it, or if you want to send it to me in the Facebook DM that we have open, that's great. I'll do my best to get that copied over. I don't see anyone in the waiting room, um, but I wanted to, um, I wanted to ask KJ, oh, I wanted to ask KJ real quick about, um, I know that you have your pulse on the movies that are coming out. Are there any real blockbusters that are actually going to take a chance and get in theaters? Do you, have no. you heard anything? No. no? Um, and with the announcement from, from Regal Cinemas, you know, needing to shut down until they can truly have some movies that make money. Um, I don't anticipate, I mean, that we're going to really see those blockbuster movies. I personally, I'm not even holding out hope for the Christmas date for Wonder Woman at this point. I, I don't, I don't see it happening. And it's such a bummer because I mean, this was supposed to be the year that we got the Black Widow movie and the Wonder Woman 1984 and women were going to be kicking butt on the big screen, um, but we're just not in, in a place um, for these movies to come out and make the money that, that they, they need to make to keep the movie production companies going. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's part of the reason I'm excited about the Heartland Film Festival going on is it is it is new movies and it's amazing movies from uh, filmmakers that maybe wouldn't have gotten so much attention had this not happened. But uh, now that we are looking for new content and, and trying to you know, have that feel of seeing new movies, uh, some of these amazing independent filmmakers I think are really going to shine during this time and get some attention that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah, it's changing everything. I've heard so many people say it's just ruining things and it's ruining how things have been, but I'm a little bit of an optimist. And I think that maybe when, when we're talking about this in, in hindsight, um, there will be some good things that come of it, um, especially things like being able to connect with people from um, across every continent on the face of the earth through digital um, communications. So you know what, I, I'm still, oh, here's Alex. Woohoo! Woohoo! So it looks like we have, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like we have all of our speed storytellers. We even have a couple of real storytellers. Now real in the I sense I was gonna of, say, excuse me. That doesn't, <laughs> Let me take that back. Real in the sense that it fits into the real triad that we established back in 2013, this virtual um, storytelling event, the Speed Storytellers, this is new to all of us. So it is one minute, it looks like to 1030. So I am gonna turn this over to KJ and I believe, let me make sure, do you have Alex's information? I, I do, and I know okay. Alex so well that okay. uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'll I'll I'm tell all you, good. <laughs> while, while you're giving Alex's um, intro, 
I will go ahead and queue up the next person who's Marianne. Oh, so perfect. Take perfect. it away, KJ. All right, here we go. A half hour full of amazing stories and each woman has three minutes to share. Uh, this is a woman who I have been connected with forever. She knew me from the Smiley Morning Show and driving around in her minivan for years. We have yet to meet in person, but somehow through the digital world, she is one of my very, very favorite people and knows me so well. And I am excited to kick off our speed storytellers with Alex Perry, the author of Minivan Mogul, a crash course course in confidence for women and the host of the minivan mogul podcast and ceo extraordinaire alex your three minutes begins now i am in the minivan can you hear me you can yes yes Ah, i'm in a sketchy parking lot near 86th street so i'm gonna make this fast what if what if saying no is the most loving and kind thing that you can do. I had the most ideal client. I mean, incredible. Like the, on paper, she had it all. She's well-spoken. She had all of this content that she wanted to go through. She had a master plan, an attorney, hilarious and funny. And she looked at me and she said, Alex, I wanna hire you. I think you can really help me. And I was like, tell me more. And she's like, listen, I've hired coaches and I've hired copywriters and I have, I have worked on this, but you get me, Alex. I just, I can tell from our conversations that you get me and I, I want to hire you. And I'm not a businesswoman. I'm like, you want to hire me? Like, oh, oh, all right. But something in my gut, something in my gut just sort of twinged. And we got off of our call And I didn't touch any of her stuff for the weekend. I just left it there. And I left it there and I just started turning her over in my mind. And I kept thinking, I'm like, okay, well, like, here are the things that we can do. But I mean, I've heard her pitch. It's a good pitch. I've heard her content. It's good content. And I'm like, but like, but she thinks I can help her. And I don't want to not help somebody. Like I'm a minivan mobile. You freaking help people. That's what you do. You open up the doors and you help, you let people in and you help them. And I kept thinking about it and I wrote notes and I crafted this really incredible, beautiful plan. And then I sat on it and I kept having this twinge. I even went so far as to talk to a mutual acquaintance that knew her. And I said, you know, I think she's incredible, but my gut just says something's wrong. So I reached out to Kelly and middle of a week, I mean, this has gone on for five days and I'm thinking, dang it, like, like, are you crazy, Alex? Like, she's a great guy. Like, wouldn't you die to work with someone like her every day? I'm like, yeah, I really would, but something's not right. And so I reached out to her and I said, let's, let's schedule a meeting. I want to talk to you. I just need to talk to you one more time. And I scheduled the meeting for a Friday. So now it's been a full week, which is a really long time in my world. That's a long time. A lot happens in a week. And I set this meeting on the calendar and I got on Zoom with her that Friday morning and my gut is still twinging. I'm like, why? I have this beautiful plan. Why? She has everything that like she, like she has all the content we could work on. Why? Yes, of course. I could, I could probably find a way to make her better. But my gut just told me that something wasn't right. And we got on the phone and I looked her in the eye and I said, Kelly, I'm not taking you on as a client. And she kind of looked at me like, what the hell? Like, I trusted you. I told you all this stuff. I want you, I want you to be my coach. And she just like, well, why? And I said to her, Kelly, I said, you've hired all of these people. You have done all of these things. I have looked at your social media. I have scoured all your stuff. I have done everything. I have done my due diligence. I have a plan in hand. I've got a bill. I've got an invoice ready for you, but I am not going to take you on as a client because the last thing you need is one more person telling you how you should speak, how you should show up. What you need to go do is speak and show up. And I could tell she was super disappointed. I could tell she was sad. And we got off the phone and I was like, oh my gosh, you're an idiot. Like, what was I thinking? Like, you're just dumb. Oh, my time is up. Oh no, you have to hear the end of this. 
You all, she called me back. She took the weekend and she said, Alex, you freed me. Thank you for telling me no. She'd written all of her content and she was ready to go. So sometimes the most loving thing that you can do is to tell somebody no. Thank you for letting me go over just a smidge on time. I slid the minivan in. You guys are amazing. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. All right, in an uh, effort to continue to speed things along, which is what I'm here to do, uh, I want to welcome uh, Marianne. I also didn't get how to pronounce your last name, and I hate butchering names. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself, but I will say she is the godmother of organic marketing, a LinkedIn marketing consultant, and she's here from Kenya. Marianne, welcome to Speed Storytellers. she's fixing things yeah i've got her unmuted so okay there you are yes. yeah, you are hi everyone my name is Mirian mbuya and i'm from nairobi kenya i am a linkedin lead generation consultant i do a lot of organic marketing and i also believe in live launches and uh, before that, uh, I, I just did content creation, but I had an eight year experience in sales, which I didn't know what to do with. And then uh, early last year, I met a, a coach who told me that she will tell me what my gift was. And that sort of blew my mind away because I've never had anyone tell me that they could tell me what I was good at and what I should have been doing. So when I heard her say that, I, I, didn't, I didn't believe her because it almost sounded prophetic and I didn't believe in just an ordinary person telling me that they could tell me about my life. Uh, but then she wanted me to work for her, work with her. She wanted me to hire her as my coach. I couldn't afford that at the time. Uh, and then we just parted ways. Uh, one week later, she came back to me and, and asked me if I was willing to help her. And she wanted help generating leads for her business. Uh, at the time, I think she was making like $5,000 per month and she had a target of getting to like 20 or 30 for that particular month. So when I started working with her, I wasn't even sure it was something I could do, but I just said, yes, let me do it. So I put myself in the test, just like she had taken the chance with me. I went in, started having conversations with people. I started doing a lot of organic outreach here and there. And in three weeks, she had made $21,000. And then she came back to me and asked me if I knew why she had reached out to me and asked me to help her. She told me that the reason she had told me she could tell me what my gift was, uh, was because she saw uh, that I was, she felt like my superpower was human connection and building relationships. And she thought that if she gave me that chance, and I did it well, then I'll have proved her guess about my gift to have been true. So she told me that the reason why she had given me that opportunity was because that is what I should be doing. Like I should be helping uh, other people in the online space, not just create content, but drive traffic and build, I know, uh, fill their calendar with qualified leads and help them sign clients. And so from there, uh, she, she took me in and she coached me on how to package my services and how to market myself and how to even talk with people and to grow my, 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 my hobby or my gift into a business. And that's what, where I am right now. Uh, so I added live launches to it. And so within the live launches, I also help my clients, my clients uh, build, grow and monetize their Facebook groups. So that is, that is my story. I am so sorry. That, that was great. Was that minutes? Oh, like how many minutes were those? <laughs> that was, you know, here I've got this clock and I had to put a battery in it. So I think it was three minutes, but it, whatever it was, it was fabulous. And I can't believe that this kind of technology allows us to connect like this. Please put your LinkedIn stuff at least 
and Facebook stuff in the chat and I'll turn it back over to KJ. We're up to yes, Shelly. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. Uh, thank, thank you, yeah, thank you. Uh-oh. Thank you, Marianne. I think that's a really important message right now. I think your gift is up. Oh, am I breaking up? Yeah, right. you pause. I think. Ah, am I back? Yes. Okay. All right. I look like I'm back. I think that the uh, um, your gift is something that's so natural to you that sometimes you have to have somebody else sort out what it is because you're just going about your life being who you are and you don't see it as something special. So I, I, I really appreciate that story, Marianne, because I highly encourage anyone who's not sure what they should be doing to uh, step outside and, and let, let someone like a, a, a coach or even a trusted friend tell you this is your gift. Uh, that's very inspiring. and uh, We appreciate you being here. And moving along, uh, she, she and I met at a con. She's one of my kind of nerdy girls. I uh, adore Shelly Harper, and I'm so proud of her for chasing her dream. She's a former advertising professional turned entrepreneur and co-founder of Conquest Journals, which has officially licensed Harry Potter planner, planners, officially licensed Supernatural, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, The Great Baking, or sorry, The Great British Baking Show Journals. Her planners, her creative resources are amazing. Shelly, your three minutes starts now. Okay, well, for me, when I first started the business, it was really just a place to keep your convention memories, your autographs and photo ops. And I didn't realize, um, I'm sorry, my kitten is tearing up the office right now. Um, I didn't realize what we were making, what it would become to people. Um, he's literally in the trash can. I didn't realize what it would become to people and how they would love our stuff. And it really happened one of the first times at a Pittsburgh Supernatural convention. Um, a girl was there with her mom and she had, it was the last day of the convention and she had one of her journals with, our photo, with her photo ops with the actors and her autographs were in it. And she ran up to the table because she lost it. She couldn't find it. And she had misplaced it when she was in one of her ops and she was just in tears. And so everybody like the convention company, we all like made announcements and thank goodness by the end of the day, it was found and returned to her, which was like miraculous because, you know, there are a few thousand people there at least. So um, they found it and we returned it to her and she was like clutching her journal. And she was like, I love this so much. And I am so grateful you guys make this. And I'm so grateful I found it. And it was a really like, for me as an entrepreneur, you think about making cool stuff and I'm a fangirl, so I want cool things. But to see how people use our things because they are memory keeping devices, like you decorate them and you put your memories and your photos in them and stuff, they really become their own pieces and they love and cherish them. And then that's just the best feeling in the world. I could have never, when we started this business, I would have never anticipated feeling like that. And I would have never anticipated the way people would love our stuff. And it just makes me so happy. I mean, I think you put something out there and sometimes you think, what if everybody hates this? What if everybody hates the design? What if everybody thinks we got the lore wrong in John Winchester's journal? You know, it's like it's like putting your like putting a piece of your soul out there on display. Um, and when it's well accepted and loved, then that is, you know, that's the reason we do it. So that's my story. Thank you. Yay! Thank you. Yay! <laughs> so, um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute that whole time. Hey, Sandra, could you post your stuff real quick? And because KJ, this will be, um, you'll be meeting KJ and all of the dames. This is the first time you've been um, part of our group. Um, I know Sandra from Facebook. And she has this groovy video on her uh, Facebook cover that I encourage you to go see. And she will post her stuff. Um, <laughs> she I'm getting I'm getting messages from other people. So I will turn this over to Sandra. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Sandra, and then we'll um, start the clock for 30 seconds. Take it away, Sandra. Okay. 
Um, first of all, thank you for having me. And I am Sandra Connor. I am the owner and operator of Think Vault Video Ninjas. And I'm just excited about this opportunity. I've been aware of the uh, digital names for a while. So, hey, glad to be here. My story is a simple one, but a very personal one. I am the uh, adoptive child. No, let me get this right. I adopted a daddy a long time ago. Loved him dearly. He's gone now. But I say I adopted him because when he married my mama, I asked him, can I call you daddy? And he said, yes. From that point, we struck out a wonderful relationship over decades. But it started very simply when the little four and a half year old, no, four and three quarters, you know, it's important when you're little to get that right. I was four and three quarters when they got married. And the following spring, he took me to work with him one day. Now, if you can picture this little girl, kind of short legs, with this five foot 11 guy who has a long stride, trying to keep up. And finally, I said, Daddy, Daddy, can you slow down? And he said, well, I can a little bit, kitten, but how about you take some longer strides? And looking back on that, that was kind of the seed for me learning how to take a little more risk, not running along like a little toddler, but to take bigger strides. And that's exactly what he did as he evolved into a business owner slash employee a little bit later. He was planting the seeds of inspiration for my entrepreneurship without my even realizing it. He put together a coffee cart. He had snacks and uh, sodas and pastries that he got up every day, three o'clock in the morning and assembled it and got his cart together and then did his re real job for eight hours. So early mornings and early afternoons is what I got used to with my daddy's schedule. But I'm going to encourage all you business owners here, when you're thinking about running a little faster or maybe taking bigger strides, it might be time to consider some bigger strides and take a little more risk because it can pay off. You can get where you're going a whole lot faster. So I'm so glad that you joined this, added your voice to this story, Sandra. And please forgive me for mispronouncing. Um, every time I hear Nevada, I always think, no, I know it's Nevada. <laughs> and now I feel like I did the same thing to you. But I hope you put your information in the um, chat so people can reach out to you on LinkedIn. Yeah. And then I'm going to turn it back over to KJ because she'll be introducing Kitsy. I can introduce myself. Did we lose KJ? <laughs> I think we lost KJ. And Amy, you're muted. I can't hear. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's my connection or you guys. Do you want me just well, to run with it? Yeah, go ahead, Kitsy. If you could introduce yourself, it'll be fabulous. <laughs> I... can, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up and I'm going to go. Okay, yes. good. Hi guys, I'm Kitsy Duncan. I am, this is the first time I've done anything like this. I consider myself a storyteller, but I don't know how I'm gonna live up to the rest of these wonderful, lovely ladies. But a little bit about myself. About 10 years ago, I started a hobby, a hobby where I'd film myself hanging out with my friends. We'd go to notoriously haunted locations and with no training at all, we'd hunt ghosts. I ended up editing this footage from these adventures and threw them up on YouTube. A few years later, I got the same show available free to members on Prime Video and now Oddity Files, which is what all this is, is a brand in itself. I have a different take on the paranormal. Ghosts aren't scary. They just have a story to tell and they're trying to communicate. I've since launched one of the most 
popular paranormal comedy podcast because ghosts aren't scary with the same motto and letting everybody know that Bigfoot really just wants a hug and he's been social distancing longer than anybody out there. During this pandemic, I wrote my first book with the same tone, expressing that ghosts just have a story to tell. Um, and I received an email recently that kind of made my heart sing Disney princess songs. So the email was from a gentleman I'd never heard from before. He had just recently found my podcast and he'd had several paranormal experiences in his lifetime. But when a shadow man in a new house started messing with his cat, I knew this. know this is close to many of your hearts, um, he did what I've been telling people they need to do for years. He treated this shadow figure like a person. He talked to this shadow figure and he asked this shadow figure to leave his cat alone and to stay out of his bedroom. I mean, I get that. Who wants somebody in their bedroom at all? So this to me, I've been preaching this for forever. Ghosts aren't scary. I, I think it seeds back to my childhood being terrified of ghosts. I'm trying to teach my four-year-old grandson that ghosts aren't scary. I said, just send them to Gigi's house. She'll talk to them. She'll take care of them. But the fact that first and foremost, that anybody's watching this silly little TV show I put up on Amazon Prime and appreciating that I'm not out there like the travel channel is saying every ghost is a demon trying to scare everybody for this silly little industry I'm in. It's not silly. It's wonderful. I love it. But a lot of people think it's silly, but that somebody got this. They talked to a shadow man in their house and said, first and foremost, my cat is off limits. Secondly, you can be anywhere in this house, but in my bedroom. And he got the results he wanted from that. He didn't tell me he loved me. He didn't tell me he loved what I was doing. He took my advice and used it what's worked for me and it worked for him as well so yeah that's my thing it's paranormal the photo op business was too easy um just what i needed isn't big enough yet and oddity files check out amazon prime thank you <laughs> yay me i'm on mute i know i'm on mute hey Hi. Um, glad you're back with us, KJ. Sorry you had to drop off there for a minute, but we muddled through that one. I didn't uh, realize I'm going to have to go on Amazon Prime and watch this. Um, I, uh, oddity Files, how interesting is that? It kind oh, of sounds so a little bit like my life generally, but it sounds like you have a little bit um uh, more interesting um, life than I do. So, <laughs> well, we have one final speed storyteller and I think we're gonna end ahead of time as I look at my trusty clock here. I we see that we have- two. How much did I miss? Um, well, we only talked about you for like three minutes while you were gone. <laughs> and we took a vote on a couple of things. So if you wanna find out, you'll have to listen to the recording afterward because I will. you know I how will. women are so tell me i didn't miss mindy or justice no you okay. miss um you missed uh well did you miss mindy no i'm not on that one nope. mindy's now oh, Mindy. Mindy. you let me handle this <laughs> okay. i'm turning it over it's mindy and justice i'm sorry yeah, that's mindy okay. That's okay. I, we still have time. I, I am very excited to introduce mm -hmm. uh, a longtime friend of mine and lifelong Hoosier. You can catch her from 6 to 10 weekday mornings on 97.1 Hank FM's Caleb and Mindy in the morning and on Saturday 6 to 9 on B1057. Mindy Winkler, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you guys. This is super cool. I didn't even know this existed. So thank you, KJ, for introducing me to these fabulous women and this opportunity. I'm thrilled. And it's, you know, being in radio, it's a lot of, you know, a responsibility. I mean, we're, you know, especially right now, people don't really look at the media favorably most of the time. 
<laughs> so, so that's, we try to keep things very light here um, at Hank FM and Caleb and I, even if you're not a country music fan, we are super fun. We're on, every, we're, we talk every couple of songs so you can enjoy that much of it. But I wanted to talk specifically about, you know, in this role, we feel our, our listeners are our biggest client and, and we want to, you know, take the time to appreciate them. And so back in May, um, fortunately, my husband works in the pharmaceutical sales industry. So he was telling me that it was nurse appreciation week coming up. And I thought, what a fabulous idea. We have a daily segment called Hank Hero and to honor our nurses. And of course, this was right in the middle of the pandemic. And, you know, our first responders and, you know, those kind of staff were working overtime. So we did this special thing where we were going to give them a hundred dollar Kroger gift card and an iPad and had people nominate a nurse that had made a difference in their life. And we had over 570 entries. We had to narrow it down to five for that week. We had a different person each week, each day. And then we picked one from those five. And these stories were just so inspirational um, to hear what these nurses had done for each of these families and just gone above and beyond. And one in particular that ended up being our winner was nominated by a Melissa and the nurse was named Melissa. And her dad, Melissa's dad had been in, all, um, in the, a unit with Alzheimer's and she was in now in Hawaii. And this Melissa, the nurse was actually FaceTiming with her so she could see her dad on a daily basis and I'm gonna start crying. So this story was so cute that um, Melissa was, you know, had to share with us the fact that she was getting to keep up with her dad through Melissa's work and getting, you know, running out and getting him food. And because her name was Melissa, even with his Alzheimer's, he felt like his daughter was there. And so it was, you know, in addition. So she was treating him like her own father. And it was just so amazing. And the, the, the role that we get to play here to have those kind of inspirational stories that we can share with the, you know, our listening audience and be able to honor them. And, you know, and the Melissa, the nurse hadn't even listened to our station before and now she's a devoted fan. And it's like, and it's just been, it's rewarding to us to be able to do that. And that's why that kind of love is, you know, it's so rewarding and I'm so blessed to be in the role that I'm in and that we get to do that for people. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much. And would you please put your stuff in the chat? I'm sorry. I, I totally, I'm. No, I'm, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I feel so bad that I, I totally skipped over you, but now up will be Justice Kelly and uh, I'll let KJ take over. Thank you very much. I'm so excited uh, to have justice here. Uh, that term I used earlier, uh, multi-passionate entrepreneur, definitely applies to justice. She joins us from the Make-A-Wish Foundation where we work together in Indiana. Uh, she puts her practice, uh, puts to practice her passion for inclusion and philanthropy. As Mrs. Indiana 2020, Justice will proudly represent the Hoosier State at the Mrs. America 2021 competition and looks forward to raising awareness for the Make-A-Wish mission through her national platform. Justice, welcome to Speed Storytellers. Hello, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm so excited for this opportunity and oh my goodness, these stories. I mean, the pressure I feel right now, but I have three minutes, so I'm gonna get into um, a, a brief story about my experience as a volunteer with Make-A-Wish. So KJ mentioned that I work for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, but I also have the pleasure of volunteering with our families. So I wanna share a story about an experience that I had that has absolutely changed my life. Um, so if you're not familiar with Make-A-Wish, Make-A-Wish grants life-changing wishes for children with life-threatening critical illnesses. Um, a common misconception, and I always love to share this, and as, as you hear this, you know, continue spreading the education and helping us to, um, you know, spread what is true about Make-A-Wish. A common misconception is that we only grant wishes for kiddos who are terminal. Um, so I, I do just like to, you know, as I share Make-A-Wish and our mission, um, that our kiddos, the, the statistic and the fact is that 70% of our wish kids go on to thrive and live amazing lives. Uh, my husband is actually one of them. So I've loved uh, my experience with Make-A-Wish. Now to my story, um, I had a wish kiddo that I had the opportunity to volunteer with, a nine-year-old boy in Indiana who was um, at the time battling with cancer. As this child's wish-granting volunteer, I had the opportunity to 
come to the family's home to ask that child, what is your wish? That is what our wish granting volunteers are um, tasked with, being able to connect with that child one-on-one, -on -one, ask them what their wish is, and help the staff to really bring to life what that one true wish is. Um, what I did not expect, and, and kind of having a little bit of background knowledge about this kiddo, knowing that you know they came from foster care, they um, were now in um, a home where you know they, they have this opportunity to have a wish granted, um, but, but because of their background, I mean, having experienced homelessness, a nine-year-old boy, you know, just has dealt with more than what I you know, could ever imagine a child to um, deal with. When asked what, what his wish was, um, you know, it wasn't so much of what I hear so often, and every wish is amazing, um, but, but the first thing that this child thought of was things that he didn't always have, wanting to make sure that he had those things. Um, when, when I first asked what, what his wish was, it was, um, you know, I want to make sure that I have a bed that I can sleep in every night. I want to make sure that I have a home. I want to make sure that I have food. I mean, these are things that absolutely brought tears to my eyes. But what was so exciting was being able to explain to him that, you know what, you're you're absolutely going to have those things and more. We want to grant a wish in addition to all of the amazing things that your family is providing for you. With the heart of this child, I mean, his wish was to give back to his classroom. He said, well, you know what, if I could think of anything, there's a really comfortable chair in our classroom and there's only one and we always fight over it. And I want the chair to myself, but everyone wants to share it and I don't like share. I mean, it was just, you know, so fun to hear him talk about how he wanted to make sure that there were enough of these soft cushion chairs for everyone. He wanted to have his own. He wanted everyone to have one. When you hear the story of a child wishing to give, wishing to give back, wishing to give to their classroom, my life was forever changed. I began to even think about the chair that I sit in differently. I began to thank the Lord above for all of the blessings and amazing things that I have. But that is my story about a nine-year-old boy from Indiana that absolutely changed my life. It was volunteering with the Make-A-Wish Foundation that I was able to have this experience. Thank you guys so much. Yay. Thank Yay. you so much, Justice. I, you know what, I did. I, I work with with Justice at Make a Wish, and I didn't even know that story. So, <laughs> uh, it is it is pretty amazing, and I will. Uh, I know we got to get stay right on time because Amy cracks the whip on these things. Uh, but I, I, I do have to say that if you have. Uh, if you have time, if you have passion, uh, the Make-A-Wish uh, mission is a place for everyone, and our request-a-thon is coming up December 3rd and 4th, and I would love for you to reach out to Justice or myself and be a part of, of the magic of making transformational wishes come true. Thank you so much, Justice, and thank you to all the speed storytellers. I'm typically not the one that cracks the whip. Our next uh, storyteller, Dr. Erin Albert, is usually the one that's always like, let's keep it on time. She is so good about stuff like that. I do want to thank you, KJ, for hosting this section. And I want to give you a chance once again to share with people how they can connect with you, where they can find you. I want you to stay. I want all of you to stay to enjoy the uh, virtual, the virtual mini unconference with the um, the traditional storyteller format. If you have to go, that's fine. But KJ, give me just like a minute about who you are again and how you want people to connect with you. Oh, sure. Uh, the easiest way to connect with me, because I do have uh, my heart and passion in many places, is kjonair.com. Uh, that'll get you to my link tree where we can connect on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn and Make-A-Wish and Pet Pals TV. Um, I am the kitty correspondent. I, I don't just share stories about cats. I live my life for them. My first word was kitty. It was not mama. It was not dada. And my parents never let me live that down. So in order to uh, show them that that meant something, I dedicated my life to making life for cats better. So if I could help you with that as a kitty correspondent, I, I share stories on Pet Pals TV, but I also consult in behavior and, and just bonding better with your cats. Uh, so kjonair.com, if you are a nerd, if you're like, wow, I love Captain America and Black Widow and all that, the sorting hat and 
everything else you've got back there. Uh, the Kind of Nerdy Girls podcast is a place where we get together as friends and talk about all of that fun stuff. And uh, you can't be kind of nerdy without being kind. So it's a very welcoming community and I would love for you to join us. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you for the theme of love. I think we all need it so much right now. And I, I love the fact that we've got some more amazing women coming up sharing incredible stories. Yes, thank you so much, KJ. And I do want to introduce you now to Dr. Erin Albert. I know a lot of you don't, aren't, may not be connected with her yet, but I can highly recommend her. She is someone I trust. And that is saying a lot because there are a lot of people I don't trust, <laughs> but she is one and she's very smart, very well connected. I'll let her introduce herself and post her stuff in the chat. And I won't start her five minutes until she's uh, done introducing herself and she says, go. Well, thank you, Amy. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Awesome. Well, it's so exciting to be here and I'm sorry I missed all of KJ's segment. Crazy cat la ladies unite. I am a cat lady as well, so thank you. Um, I, um, I really don't have anything super formal today. And I know that's gonna shock Amy because yes, I love being on time and yes, I'm usually very well organized. But with a theme of love today, I simply wanted to talk about not so much a tool on social media. My preference really is LinkedIn because I do a lot of business to business communication. It's more about what has happened during the COVID-19 pandemic as a healthcare professional working in healthcare benefits. And my goal in providing everything that I post on LinkedIn or any social media profile is really to truly edutain. And so my message to you all today in thinking about how you utilize these tools and how do you maximize them moving forward is the keyword of consistency. So whatever it is that you're doing, whatever message you need to share across your platforms, I would offer for consideration the one thing that I think has kind of held us together during this pandemic. I know many of us, myself included, actually started a brand new job remotely during the pandemic. And so the one thing that is holding us together during the pandemic is online communication. Of course, there's an argument that it does the opposite as well, but if we're talking about love here, I'm going to always go towards the light. Now, what is best practices when it comes to social media? Again, the word is consistency. So everything from being regular and intentional about your communications on social media, I think KJ does a wonderful job um, across all of her different passions. And I love that about her. And I think whatever message that we're trying to convey through social media, we just need to be consistent. One thing that I've done during the pandemic is I've tried to provide a weekly video and an update for my nerdy world of pharmacy and pharmacy benefits. And I post that video every weekend and share it with my community about what's going on in pharmacy and healthcare right now. During the pandemic, I think it's key to understanding the issues around our healthcare. What if we lose it? What if we have to go on COBRA? Things like that. I'm trying to convey to my audience in a consistent fashion. I have a face for podcasting. My first you know, passion is podcasting. And I know Amy disagrees with me on that. But one thing I really did kind of try to embrace during the pandemic is going to video. And video really is, I think, a great medium, especially right now, to try to connect with one another's when we have all of these physical constraints in connection. So whatever it is that your message is, whatever you nerd out on, whatever it is that you love, just try to be consistent across your platforms and you and you alone know what your best channels are moving forward. So with that, I'll yield the rest of my time and we can move on to the next speaker. Well, thank you for yielding that time. We have Michelle Cox next, but I do wanna ask a quick question. There's Michelle. 
Um, I do want to ask a quick question. You said you use video, but aren't you known for podcasting? I mean, isn't um, that your Bailey with? I love podcasting. I was a nerd on podcasting way back in 2006. The first time podcasting was cool. And the great thing about the pandemic is that during the beginning of the lockdowns, we actually decreased the number of downloads on podcasting, but we've subsequently made up for that and exceeded that now. So I love podcasting. I podcast actually at two different channels. My channel is called The Edutainer and I'll be sure to put in links after I talk. But also I uh, podcast over at my day job with Apex Benefits. The podcast there is called The Point Podcast. Right now, during the month of October, it is American Pharmacist Month, by the way. So please thank your pharmacist the next time you see him or her. And we have a podcast mini series ongoing right now celebrating pharmacy badasses. Yes, I just use that word. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm highly shocked. I, that's a word I don't use at all. Um, but let, let's move on to Michelle Cox. Michelle, I've known Michelle for a while and she has been so wonderful. Um, her company is Cox Residential and they do construction. And I love that she's part of my rotary group and just, uh, I mean, when you meet her in person, the storytellers that have been in the face-to-face uh, -face events will know that she's just warm and giving. And as with all of our storytellers, I encourage you to reach out to them and um, make that stronger connection. It can only help all of us. And with that, I'll turn it over to Michelle to introduce herself, her company first, and then a five-minute story. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am so happy to be here and see all these beautiful faces. And um, of course, everybody who knows me, I'm always all about women power, super feminist. And when I say super feminist, it doesn't mean that I hate men because there's a misconception there where they're like, oh, we don't need men. No, I absolutely uh, believe that we need each other and we have different abilities, but also um, we are capable to do more than what nowadays society likes to understand. And with that being said, I'm gonna share a very quick um, story. Most of you guys already know my story. I have um, been working in the construction industry for a couple of years now, where I have received a lot of pushback, especially from men, as normal, right? Um, in the last couple of years, uh, me and my husband have been for my husband and me, one sec, uh, had been pushing the company to grow in, to um, uh, land in big jobs and get somewhere. Uh, this is the second year that we have hit Inc, not 5,000, but Inc 500, which is huge. We are number one in Indiana as construction company. And I'm very proud that it is owned by a woman, right? Um, in the last couple of years also, I have deal with uh, big companies who have big projects. And when they came to discuss the projects, they didn't want to talk to me. They always wanted to talk to my husband. He's also a full-time firefighter, so he was not always available. And any time I was letting them know, hey, um, he's a firefighter. He's not always available. You can deal with me. Anything he can do, I can also do it. I also have the knowledge. I also have the power, blah, blah, blah. They refuse to deal with me, right? Um, we have landed a couple million dollar jobs last couple of years, especially last one. It was a very, very good year. We're really blessed. Um, and the unexpected happened. My husband got sick, which is not good. You know, I'm not happy about it, we're pushing. He's getting through it, thank God he's getting better. But guess who is everybody reaching out to now? And they have no other choice but to deal with me. And it's really funny because you will think that, uh, I mean, you sometimes I don't even believe this is 2020 yet. You know, you still feel sometimes like you're living in the 1900s, 1800s. Uh, when we have had business coach meetings, um, I was pregnant. I was pregnant actually last conference too. And I remember when every time my husband and I disagree on how to run the business and we had that meeting with the business coach, I will always get the same answer. It's your hormones. 
why don't you take a couple years off? You know, why don't you let your husband do what he's supposed to do and you do what you're supposed to do? And I'm like, what is it I'm supposed to do? Well, you know, you're pregnant, you're gonna have a baby, take it easy, just go home, take care of the babies, enjoy life. And I'm like, I am enjoying life. I enjoy working. I am doing what I love doing, which is working and taking care of the projects. I am completely capable, right? Well, he got sick. He's not available anymore. Guess who's running this multi-million dollar company? Me. So don't ever let anybody tell you what you can, what you cannot do anytime you're feeling push. And, and I was very inspired by KJ's um, story last time that we were together uh, because I guess like she was limited also, you know, and she was like, no, I, I can do things on my own and I, I am capable of doing more things than people are telling me that I can, you know? So that's exactly how I feel. And, and don't quit. If every, any, any time you feel like the pressure that you have to quit or people are like, you're not good enough, don't listen to them. Okay. Just keep going. Um, I don't want to pass over time, Amy, but uh, you guys are awesome. Keep pushing and keep making us proud because we are absolutely capable to do anything that we want. So I have to tell just a real fast story about uh, Michelle. She sent her husband out um, because we had a hailstorm that went through in April. And I don't know, I guess hailstorms really do a number on your roots. And they came out and they said, hey, you better call your insurance. Now the insurance never contacted me, but he came out and said, look, this happened back in April um, and we're checking some of the people that we care about um, and making sure that they have uh, the tools they need to make sure it's fixed. And because of that, um, I'm not getting a new roof but I did get a check for $621 to fix my, uh, some of my downspouts. And that never would have happened if Michelle hadn't had been around keeping an eye on me. Now, I know you serve central Indiana. Are there specific places in central Indiana where you focus well, or is it throughout? in the Hamilton County area. Okay. However, we go whatever we need it. Right now, like I mentioned before, we are growing super fast. Um, there are very few companies, and I like to say this very proud, uh, that keep it honest. And that has been my motto since the very beginning. I do not care to win $1,000 or $2,000 right now because eventually it's either, if it's good money, then good things will come. But if it's bad money, I believe in karma totally. So, uh, we haven't grown as fast as other companies, but we also have stay where other companies have disappeared because they haven't done the right thing. So uh, we do Hamilton County. We have work out of the state. I just don't want to go. We, and we have had many opportunities to go outside of the state, like grow nationwide. I don't want to do it yet. I want to keep it small. I want to keep it family owned and I want to continue to do the right thing in hiring people who share the same values that we do, which is surprisingly really hard to find nowadays. That is, it really is. And for those of you who aren't connected to Michelle on Facebook, her, her little boy that she had is just so darling. It's worth just a trip to go see him. He is so cute. Um, now, let's welcome our third storyteller for this triad, Mel McMahon. She is the owner of Indiana Originals. I think almost everybody here, except maybe for maybe um, Mary Ann in Kenya, doesn't know about Mel <laughs> from Indiana Originals, but I think almost everybody else here uh, does. I will let Mel introduce herself and share her story and take it away, Mel. Thank you very much, Amy. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay, awesome. Um, so as Amy said, my name is Mel McMahon Stone. Uh, most people know me as Mel McMahon, but for our one year anniversary of marriage, I added Stone to my last name as an anniversary present to my husband. Um, and you know, some of that had to do with identity. 
And a lot of that had to do with learning how to love myself. My background is in broadcasting and business development. And when you're in radio and television, your love comes from other people. And I know lots of people listening right now can relate to this, but especially in broadcasting, you have lovers and you have haters and nobody really cares about you and how you love yourself or what you think about yourself. It's all about your listeners and it's all about your ratings. And I grew up in a career that was very much about what other people thought of me. And I quickly learned that being someone's employee, listening to that kind of criticism, having my world depend on what other people think of me, wasn't going to be a good fit for me. I don't know that at the time I recognized it that way, but I did recognize that something was off and something wasn't going to work. And with radio and television, you know, you're not really in control of your own destiny, right? It's really, you know, they say where you have to be when, um, and I'm not a good employee. I've learned very early on that I wasn't a good employee. In fact, when I was 17 working at a restaurant downtown, I disagreed with the owner of that restaurant on something. And he goes, you realize you're going to be your own boss one day, right? And I had no idea what he was talking about. But here I am 20 years later running not just one company, but two companies. Uh, Indiana Originals, as you heard Amy talk about, is our promotions and branding company. We help independent business owners here in Indiana stand out from their national competitors. We help them brand themselves as local. We help them find resources that they might have if they were part of a franchise or the buying power they might have if they were part of a national chain. We bring those owners together to help them create healthier, stronger communities and more jobs in Indiana. And now I'm also the owner of a second company we just launched yesterday. It's called Indiana Gifts. It's an online retail store for products made here in Indiana by Indiana companies. And these companies come from not only loving myself now, but loving others, right? Before it used to be very much me, me, me. What does that person think of me? Where can I get this love? Where can I get this satisfaction? How many, you know, we see this in social media right now. How many likes did that post get? Okay, that was kind of the real life of working in broadcasting. But as I left broadcasting, as I learned to love myself, I realized that my growth comes from promoting the love of others. And that's what we do with Indiana Originals and Indiana Gifts. We show the love, right? Today's post on my Indiana Originals Instagram and Facebook account is a picture of our logo at Movable Feast on 65th Street and them showing and declaring that they are local. And so what do I do? I share that. I try to get people to understand that this logo means something and you need to go support that business, right? When you put your mission over money, everything comes together and everything changes. And once I realized that, you know, that it's not about the money, it's not about that, those dollar signs you put into yourself, it's about what you give, that's when things really clicked. And that's when things really started to matter. You know, in 2014, we launched Indiana Originals. It was May. It was just kind of a random time, but I knew we had to do it. And it was shortly thereafter that I realized I could not be director of major gifts at the Salvation Army, where I was at the time, and launch Indian Originals and really get it off the ground. And so I went back to radio full time. And guess what? I went back to not loving things. Because again, it was about my ratings. It was about my share points. It was about what people thought of me. And if you've met me before, you know, I really don't care what people think of me right? Because I know I'm a good person. I know that my karma values are in check. And being in that world where I'm constantly criticized for a lot of things that aren't even in my control wasn't a good fit for me. In 2015, I had the opportunity to do Indian Originals full-time, and that's what I pursued. And in 2018, I was at a woman-owned business group, and I had the chance to throw out an idea. And I said, hey, I really want to open up kind of like a gift shop. What do you love about Etsy? What do you not like about it? What do you like about e-commerce? And here we are two years later, and we've officially opened up Indiana Gifts. And these successes are only possible by spreading the love. These successes only are existing because other people are showing the love for local businesses. And I just really want to enforce today that putting love first, healthy love, healthy promotion, that is what should lead the way. And when you do that naturally, you get notes like this. Uh, this is a book, it's called The Skeleton Melodies. 
It's by a local author named Clint Smith, and we put his book up on Indiana Gifts. So he's in our book section. And this is a copy he sent just for me. And this is the note he wrote. This is October 5th, 2020. To Mel, a newfound friend whose energetic support and dedication for her fellow Hoosiers is an inspiration. With gratitude, Clint Smith. And that's really what I want people to feel when they talk to me. I want them to feel the love that I'm sharing. I want them to feel the inspiration. And when I know that I'm doing that sincerely, I know that things are always going to work out. So thank you so much for your time today. And thank you very much, Amy, for this opportunity to be a storyteller. I don't know what number we're on now, but it's always a great group. And I just love being inspired by everyone that's on the panel here. So thank you. And, and Mel, um, is, so Indiana Originals is a, what is the gift, the website for the gifts? Indiana.gifts. Oh. Well, there's, that seems really easy. I yeah, seem to. There's no.com. Well, and it's one of those like serendipity things, right? It's like, okay, I want to open this. Indiana.gifts, the website was available. Indiana.gifts, Instagram was available. Indiana.gifts, Facebook was available. Like all of these different things. And I went to the Secretary of State's website and no one owns the name Indiana Gifts. Except me now. Go figure. So it all came together. So yeah, so that's, that's what we're doing. And I'll put the links in the chat. Oh, okay. So Indiana.gifts. And you said you have books. What else? I mean, is it just, do you we have, have everything? We have coasters, we have candles, we have pet treats, we have bird perches. Like you want your bird to perch on an antler. We have those. Uh, we have t-shirts, we have hoodies, we have, um, my gosh, cutting boards, you know, just, just all amazing products made by Indiana companies. So when we keep adding, uh, we have a lot of products in the queue, um, but we're running this a little different. You know, it's not an Etsy site, right? We are an online retailer. So we are actually buying the items wholesale from most of our vendors and we're selling them retail. So we're taking a lot of that trouble away from business owners when somebody else wants a cut of the money, but you still have to do all the work. And so we're trying to not create that need. Okay. And how, how has, I'm going to ask this of all the, um, the storytellers in this triad, how has the um, pandemic switched things up for how you do business? And I'm going to ask Mel first, since she's right there. Sure. Um, so the day that things started getting shut down, I was at the fairgrounds setting up for the flower and patio show. That's right. That was, a, I remember that. I had just moved a week before that to Jamestown in the middle of nowhere. And the week before that, I had another miscarriage. So those two to three weeks, yeah. I really thought the world was going to end again. I was like, I don't know how anything good can come out of 2020. Little did I know that this was actually going to be the best year for Indiana Originals that we've ever had. People really embrace what we've been talking about. They're seeing that local really does matter. They're understanding that these independent business owners have a huge impact on our communities and the health and wellness of our communities and our people and they're our job creators. And April was actually our largest month of applications we've ever had for Indiana Originals. And so it's actually afforded us a lot of opportunities and it gave us the opportunity to open Indiana Gifts as well because people wanna support local and they're doing it and we are giving them another way. And so for us, it's been challenging trying to help our members navigate what's going through. We've had a few members decide to close, which is really tough, especially, um, you know, for me, I really truly love and care for all of our members. And so, you know, a little piece of my heart breaks every time that a business has to close when they don't choose to, but for Indiana originals and for the local businesses as a whole, we're really getting the attention that these local business owners deserve. And so that has been very positive through all of this. So Aaron, how about you? How has the pandemic changed your life? I know that uh, you were working remotely before the pandemic, right? For mm -hmm. a company in Washington, DC. Yeah, and I switched employers during the lockdown period. So on April 20th, I started with Apex Benefits. And because we provide healthcare benefits to employers in Indiana, we're an essential business. 
So even though we were on lockdown, we were all working from home. And what I loved about social media during that time was frankly, that was the only way that I could connect to a lot of my new colleagues. So I literally met a lot of them online and through social media before I met them in the real world, which was surreal for me because this was not an environment I was used to. And even though I had worked remotely for several different employers before, you always at least did a face-to-face -face interview in real life, right? Before you decided to join an organization. So I interviewed online, like a, a, a video platform, which was also surreal. Plus, you know, video streaming at the time, everybody was working from home and you'd have those awkward outages Yes. with video and audio and you're like you look incompetent but it's really your provider right you have nothing to do with it and it's completely out of your control so social media for me was the silver lining here because i but for it i would not have met my colleagues until you know we went back to the office of which we're still kind of in a staggered environment for some of us due to family concerns or covid concerns so I am so grateful that we have social media because I would have never met or connected with my colleagues during the lockdown period. Well, and without social media, we never would have met. And I know I've enriched your life so much, Erin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And likewise, I think, you know, the whole onus of social media dames, I'm shocked that we're at our ninth social media dames unconference. And yes, we went virtual. And I think that's a natural fit for us because we talk about social media so much, but I've enjoyed our friendship. And again, but for the medium of Twitter, we never would have met. That's right. That's right. Well, it looks like we're one minute past our second triad. And I know I saw Sue Mackey join us and we have Shaka Coleman. And uh, are you, can you unmute for a second, Shaka? Because I want to ask, is it Chaka or Shaka? It's because Chaka with a hard Ch CH. Yeah. Okay. I am so sorry. I will um I will put that in my head. You're not the first person that I mispronounced their name, so please don't take offense. But right now I'm I'm not seeing Trisetta, but I'm hoping that she'll join us. I will go ahead and introduce Sue Mackey. She is the first storyteller in our 1130 triad. We're starting off just a little bit late. Um, I want, I asked her because she is running for office and I'm very passionate about getting women who are um, active in politics to get out there because I think we can run the world better than some of our male counterparts. That's just a personal opinion. And I've, as I mentioned before, oh, there's Trisetta. she just joined us. As I mentioned before, um, I'm all about liking white guys. I've got some brothers who are white guys and I think they're all fine and good, but it is nice when uh, we can promote um, the feminine voice in politics. I think it's a, a voice of reason in a lot of instances where there isn't a lot of reason out there. So Sue, I will let you introduce yourself and give you the five minutes and take it away. I hope you can stay for the mini panel discussion where we may ask a couple of questions. Yes, so take it away, Sue. I wear several different hats and the story I was th uh, thinking about has to do with my professional capacity, but as we all know, our our work lives, our volunteer lives, our um, community service lives, they tend to all, and family lives, they kind of blend, blend together. And what I am during my day job is I'm a manager of environmental initiatives and education for the city of Carmel Utilities. I also um, manage, and in that job, I do the public relations and community education for the city of Carmel Utilities. And I also manage your city's trash and recycling program. And then I also, for the mayor's office, manage the Carmel Small Business Network and the Neighborhood Association Network, which, is, which are all the HOAs in the community that meet periodically pre-COVID. We haven't met for a while now with the mayor and I am the conduit for them to the city to get their 
questions answered. And I'm also running for county council at large. And I'm also a Carmel Rotarian. I'm also um, volunteer. I'm on the Carmel Historic Preservation Commission, um, an International Arts Festival Committee. Um, and I know there's ones I, I just love our community and I love community service. Some people have hobbies of other things. I volunteer as my hobby. So I enjoy that very much. Um, my quick question, my quick little story here today has to do with my job. And when Amy said, talk about love and something inspiring, the inspiring, it's like pieces is you have to look for inspiration everywhere. But at the city of Carmel, a few years ago, seven, eight years ago or more, the mayor said, you know, we need to look at a citywide trash and recycling contract. Previous to um, uh, our current contract, everybody did their own thing for trash. You could have a street that um, one house is Monday trash service, the next house is Tuesday, and so on through the whole week. So there was always trash sitting out in front of your house, a, a, a house on the street. And then also everyone was paying different amounts of money. Some were $30 a month, some were $23. It was all over the place. As well as some people had recycling, some didn't. Some were charged a lot for recycling, some weren't charged very much at all. So it was really kind of crazy and hodgepodge. And, and municipalities around us, Zionsville, Westfield, Noblesville, they had contracts that provided trash and recycling to people. So when we went out to bid and then we were talking to the residents about communicating out there, this is what we're considering, we were blown away by the number of people on both ends of the spectrum. One that were thrilled because they got curbside recycling as part of the contract and most people saved quite a bit of money and almost everybody saved some, some money or just came even. Then there's the other spectrum that were furious that you were taking away their right to pick their trash contractor and they love their trash contractor and they didn't want to leave because we're a public one and, and people who had raised trash service say, I love Ray's and I don't want to leave them. And my phone rang off the hook for weeks. And it was amazing the people who called so angry and screaming at you and yelling, some are crying. I had several people, one man was just bawling uh, on the phone that we were moving his trash contractor. So you have to stop and think, okay, it, it was hard to not take all those screams and yells personally, but I didn't because I thought that they're not upset about trash. It's not that that was getting them all upset. It was the fact that um, there was something else in their life that was bothering them and they were venting it through trash. So every phone call I took, I stopped and thought, you know, there's something you know, how can I make this person's life better, more pleasant? Yes, there's something that they don't like, but maybe I can try to help them see that it's not that big of a deal and that it's, it's, it's okay and you're going to get good trash service at a good price and I'm here to help if something goes wrong. If you were happy with your old trash contractor, I had raised before that and I empathized. I said, yes, I had him for 20 years, loved him, but this will be fine too. So it was working with them and trying to understand that they were just venting to you something else was going on in their life that was causing that, that disruption. So with that, it's just, you just have to love people. You have to, to get on their, their um, to get on the same page with them and try to serve them and try to make them um, feel good where, where they are. And that's what customer service is about, community service fellow mankind service, that's what it's about. And that's why I'm running for office. I realized if I can go through that trash weeks of screaming, I can go through anything. So it was, it all worked out well. And, um, but the, the takeaway was, and you hear this now in this pandemic, people are dealing with things and they, what you see is because they're dealing with something you don't know about. So just chill. So I have to tell you, Sue, you made a video about recycling that I still quote to people because it's so informative. I thought I was like, oh, I know all about recycling. And there were so many things that I didn't realize, like 
the size of what you put in a recycling thing is important. And I just want to thank you because I did live through that raise. Um, what is it? Nash? No, not national, but who's the the trash carrier now? Republic. Public service. Right? So um, I lived through that and I was sad to see Ray's go. And do we know if they're still in business? Because I feel I, they are. Oh, yeah. And um, so that makes me feel better because I love it that every week my recycling and my trash is picked up and I just have to push it to the curb. And I, I'm very thankful um, for one. And I didn't call to complain at all, but I did, my heart hurt a little bit for Ray's because it seemed like it was a little mom pop compared to a large, I don't even know if it was, that was just my impression, but I appreciate you taking that guff and getting us to the point where I really like my, um, my trash service and recycling service. So thank you. And I hope you kick ass in the election. Oh, um, I know you personally through Rotary and through uh, another woman's group that we belong to. And I wholeheartedly recommend that you vote for her. I know she didn't ask me to solicit and I wouldn't ever. There are other people on this call that I would like to run for, that I would like if they ran for office, but I'm glad you are, Sue. And let's move on to our next, um, to our next storyteller who is Trisetta Briggs. She is a long time storyteller. She, I don't know, is this your, are you out there, Trisetta? Is this your fifth or sixth time? How, how many, how many unconferences have you participated in? Good morning, everyone. I think it is my fourth, but it has been, it has been a ball. So I've been, <laughs> I've been happy to participate in all of them. And I, I keep coming back. And for some reason, Amy keeps asking me back. I don't know why, but. Because <laughs> you keep saying yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> but, I, but I love it. So yes, fourth year, I believe. <clears throat> I will let you introduce yourself and take it away with your five minutes. Well, sure, sure. Well, again, uh, thank you for offering uh, to bring me back, Amy. And uh, I hate that I missed everyone. I just got off of learning series with a, a college that I'm working with. But I'm Trosetta Briggs, and I'm the owner of Performance 3. I'm the chief performance officer. I What I do is I help leaders high perform because we believe that every leader can be a high performer uh, with the right opportunity and the right culture. And so to that end, we provide coaching, speaking, and training services and products to help them do both. So we get an opportunity to work with some very cool clients like uh, Toyota, like Indigo, like um, Ball State University, like Ivy Tech, like you know various, various industries across uh, the spectrum and uh, up to 10,000 employees, but also with small business owners. So we help diverse global leaders with leadership development. And that is what we are basically as a, a leadership, a national leadership development firm. We are certified as a minority women-owned business, a woman-owned small business, and you know various professional certifications as well. So that's who I am and what I do. As far as the five minutes, and Amy told me I could talk about love, right? <laughs> All right, so, you know, as I, as I thought about this whole concept of love and Amy and others know what has happened in the last year, uh, I lost my mom in November. Before that, it was two or three years of, um, caregiving and other things that were relative to that. And so that was a that was a tough time. And I'm sure some of you might might have gone through similar things, lost a loved one. Uh, but we know when it's our parents or our mom, it can be extremely devastating. And it, and it was for me. So I feel that I was in this stage of, of just redefining love, you know, and how I should show it to someone who was no longer here that I was so very connected to. 
so I've, I've done a couple of things because I wanted to honor my mom's legacy and I wanted to honor it well. In August of 2019, I started a group on Facebook called High Performing Women. And uh, some of the people in here today are in that group. I wanted to inspire Amy's in. <laughs> Mal, let's see, who do we have? We got Sandra, uh, I think Jennifer as well. So got, got people in here on, in the group. The rest of you are, are welcome to join. Just send me an invite or send me a request to join that is. But I started that group to help inspire and support women on their high performance journey because we have unique challenges as women in trying to be high performers, whether we have our own business or whether we are working for someone else. So I wanted to help with the challenges as well as create opportunities to high perform. So that group is all about inspiration and supporting each other. So I do uh, high performing women highlights. I you know, post inspirational content to help you stay strong and supportive. Uh, I, I post things to help you thrive in 2020 with all that's going on, despite what's going on. Uh, and we're actually having our first event tomorrow, which is called a gathering of high performing women. It is at the VIP, VIP Center for Business Women. And the sales have actually ended, but if you guys want to stop by because you're part of this group, you're welcome to do so. It's at 3755 North Washington Boulevard. It is a very cool space, just very cozy. We'll have special online activities from 1030 to 1115 for those who can't be there. And if that's your preference, send me a note and I'll send you the Zoom link. But we're gonna be there from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. We'll have drawings. My daughter is a wonderful singer. She's gonna sing. My husband will be taking photographs. We've had some other great contributors to help us uh, do this. One of my friends uh, does jewelry and she donated jewelry for the prizes. And we also have some little gifts for everyone who stops by. So that's one thing I'm doing to honor women and honor my mom and do it productively and the things that I know she would love for me to be doing. I was, I'm also getting some very cool opportunities this year. Uh, the blessing is that through social media and other things I've been contacted because of the kind of work I do with diversity and cultural intelligence. I did that work before, but now with the environment we're in, it's certainly, certainly very much needed. You know, having those conversations, uh, having those strategies about how we're gonna move forward through all of this. And so I'm helping a lot of different organizations do that. Another very cool thing is that I was selected to be a coach for the Women in Business series, video series, which is a partnership between the National Association of Women Business Owners, Girl Scouts, and Verizon Wireless. And so the first video launched last week, the second video just launched. And so it's, it's really cool and I'm honored to be part of that. Uh, in the community, I am on the executive committee for NABO, National Association for Women Business Owners. I serve on various advisory committees, chair different things here and there. And I just, I just love being a, a community leader who helps leaders to define their high performance and live out that legacy and doing all the things that I absolutely know. Sorry, I absolutely know my mom would love. So I don't know if that was five minutes, Amy. I just shared my story. I didn't prepare anything. I just said, figured I'd share from the heart. <laughs> well, and I just typed in 30 seconds. So, but I do want to ask how, and, and I've asked other storytellers, um, you mentioned that you're getting more jobs because of the pandemic. Is that, did I like understand that or is it? a different type of work that's going on since the pandemic moved us all inside? Um, no, actually I am getting, I thought once the pandemic hit, you know, well, that's it, I'm dried up. And some things canceled and delayed and postponed, but, <coughs> excuse me, dealing with some allergy things. But then because of the work I've, I've done for years, I'm, I'm a certified diversity practitioner with SHRM. And I incorporate diversity and that emotional intelligence piece around that into everything I do. 
but I, you know, I'd been doing it for years, but now because people knew that I did that and I expressed that, I've been getting calls and work and yes, I've been doing a lot of work around that right now. And it's not the only type of workshops uh, and things I do, but it is definitely always integrated into it. And then I specifically do diversity type workshops on, you know, understanding and reducing unconscious bias, uh, reducing and understanding microaggressions, um, you know, let's see, accelerating the development of diversity cultures, uh, having the difficult diversity conversation, uh, creating cultures of belonging for the new reality. So I've been doing all those things to help organizations and companies that are really serious about taking this diversity and inclusion, equity and belonging to the next level as making it sustainable throughout their organization. Belonging, that word came up in the Rotary meeting last week. I don't know if, if Chaka remembers mm -hmm. that, um, but uh, belonging seems to be a, a, a word that is popping up here and there. Um, well, Trisetta, thank you so much. I do want to introduce Chaka Coleman. I don't know her very well. I'm hoping to get to know her better. She's part of my Rotary Club, which um, seems a, a bit unusual. Um, you, uh, for those watching, may not realize how diverse and um, um, inclusive the Rotary Club of Carmel is. I'm sure all Rotary Clubs are, but I think we do a particularly good job um, about inclusion and belonging, or at least I hope we do. And I will let Chaka Coleman um, introduce herself and give her five minutes. Take it away, Chaka. Thank you, Amy. Um, like Amy said, my name is Chaka Coleman. I am a fellow Rotarian and I'm also a law student um, in my second year, so just one more to go. Um, so I did prepare my remarks because I'll fly off if I don't. Um, my story kind of begins a couple of years ago and I was working for a judge and she said to me, I love your work. And not only do I love your work, I think that you're capable of being an attorney. And she wanted to encourage my dream of attending law school. Um, but at the time, I didn't even have my bachelor's degree, and I was actually pregnant with my fourth kid. So despite all the odds, and I had my fifth kid, not even a year earlier, I was accepted into law school, and I kind of began the journey that I'm on now. So anyone who knows the legal field knows that networking is really important. And I had um, a mentor who said one of the best ways to network was through LinkedIn. So she encouraged me to join LinkedIn and she said that's how she had gotten her new high powered job. And she kept describing how essential it was to my career. Um, so I relented and I joined LinkedIn. Well, I was miserable. Every single time I logged on to LinkedIn, I felt like I would never compare to all of the amazing accomplishments that these individuals had achieved in their careers. I was starting late. I had a young family. I had five children. Um, and I was constantly in fear of portraying myself as an image that no one would believe in. Um, but I had to remember, like, someone did believe in me. And they love my work and my grit and my perseverance. And I should not have allowed a platform to deny me joy. So um, I left and I haven't gone back. And I really want you guys to remember that you're allowed to be your most authentic self and your path is not going to mimic someone else's. So on Facebook, you can find me like sharing memes one day. And then the next day I talk about a really important committee that I'm on. Um, either way, I'm portraying myself in a way that makes me feel comfortable. And it hasn't stopped me. It hasn't stopped me from um, getting jobs, from meeting people like Amy, um, from helping out in the Carmel Rotary and doing their, um, some of their social media stuff, their Gearbox, which is their weekly electronic newsletter. Um, I haven't been stopped by my lack of presence 
on a particular platform. So people think I have to be on Twitter, I have to be on LinkedIn and Facebook and Reddit, and um, you just have to be true to your authentic self. And there are platforms that allow you to connect with individuals in a more personal way, which at times can really grow your brand or your business. Um, So if you have a kid who spills spaghetti all over themselves, or you have a really witty Twitter thread, um, all of those things make an impact without compromising your values, without making you feel like you're competing with someone else um, and that you're walking on a path that really you weren't meant to walk on. Um, So really today, I just wanna encourage you guys to find your social media voice, but do it with your mental health in mind. And don't feel discouraged um, when your accomplishments aren't reflective of your counterparts. And someone is going to love your work, your business, um, your brand, and in turn, you're going to love yourself. And I love your story. Isn't it a shame that having five kids isn't like something you can brag about on LinkedIn? I mean, I only have one. And I, you know, of course she's fabulous. Um, I'm not biased in the least. She is really, she is fabulous. But why isn't that a skill on LinkedIn to add? Because it's, it's not easy being a mom. And as the youngest of five, I don't know how my mom did it. And Chaka, I'm, I didn't know you had that many kids. You are amazing (laughs) to me. Thank you. Um, I do have to say, I am a little sad. You're not on LinkedIn though. Um, I think that um, Marianne had to drop off, but you missed out meeting Marianne from Nairobi, Kenya. Not that that's, I'm just amazed that we can connect on platforms like LinkedIn um, to people across the the world. We've never had that capacity before. Um, I know you're relatively new to central Indiana. How has the pandemic affected you and trying to be trying to be your authentic self with your five kids I think it's even better because you have more personal moments now um I did an Instagram takeover for my law school and I'm literally trying to record a video and my daughter walks in and is like mom 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 and it was just funny and everybody was like this is real life you know you can't really get things done as a parent all the time but it just provides more ways to kind of mix things up um, and I have to tell you, uh, during our last couple of Rotary meetings, we've had a, a baby pop in here and there. And the thing is, when that happens, everyone on the Zoom call, all of their faces light up. Watch it next time because a puppy will come in and everyone on Zoom, their face is going to light up and they're, it's like making their day. So these, these little authentic moments that happen in our lives really make us, uh, um, give us the ability to connect with everyone else who's had those kind of moments in their lives. Um, how can people connect with you, Chaka? I, I know you mentioned Facebook and um, Instagram. Are, is there any place else where you're hanging out online being your authentic self? No, I don't have time for anything else (laughs) for you. Good answer. Well, I see that we have two minutes left. I don't have a really good wrap up for this, but I will say I like every time I'm pushed up to the last minute preparing things. And I rely so heavily on the women who share their stories and share their um, authentic selves with the other women in the room. I will copy the chat. I will make sure that it's part on, um, of the Facebook, um, on the uh, Facebook live recording that should be there now. And if there's any, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I will connect all of you because you are awesome. And I'm so grateful that I know these awesome women and you all um, help me out. Uh, by sharing your wisdom and making yourselves open. So with a minute to go, I'm going to sign up. I'm also going to invite anyone who is listening live or afterward, if you would like to be 
part of the Carmel Rotary, please reach out to me. It is a group that was very surprising to me. Sue has been wonderful in um, donating so much of her time to help the community. Um, Chaka is working on that gearbox, which I would never tackle, and I'm so thankful she's doing that because that is a huge job. So thank you for that. And thank you to all who have participated and listened. And please make sure that you take care of yourself and others and make sure that you connect with everyone. And I wish nothing but um, living long and prospering for all of you. <laughs> We'll sign off for now.